Uh, thank you. My presentation is in two parts. First of all, I'm a self-builder. I've done two properties. That's the second one. And secondly, I'll tell you what the council can do for you to try and help you achieve what you want to do. Way back in 1977, I commissioned a little two-bed house uh, and then spent the next 13 years turning it into a much larger four-bed house, double garage. That's what everybody aspired to way back then. My uh, mortgage then, because we've just been talking about mortgages, £9,000. Uh, this one, this uh, I was very fortunate, I got my inheritance early, this site was gifted to me. So we commissioned the four bed house and uh, this is what we did. We had a builder do the whole thing, I did the, the plans, I did the building regs application and all that sort of thing because it was fairly straightforward in the old days. Way back in 1990 this was the bee's knees, but be warned when you're self building, everything turns into uh, a little bit of a time warp. Uh, this is a, a Laura Ashley type house. Uh, we've got the uh, period curtains, the fabrics, the dado rails, we have the mahogany windows, the mahogany doors and the staircase and it time warped very quickly. So for those who just jested about grey windows, what time warp are you creating? So for this house, you know, it, uh, I was gifted the site, the build was £90,000, 30 years on, now £350,000. Having said that, I don't want to leave. I'm quite happy with it. I just keep refurbing it every 10 years. For the self-builder, the rewards are absolutely fabulous because you're getting a high-quality design. You're getting very much more that you can get on the open market. You get what you actually want because what you've actually designed. And you get something that no builder or volume builder certainly doesn't provide. But what can we as the council provide? We're here to help you, first of all, uh, do whatever we can to push your scheme along, whether it's a community-led scheme or whether it's a single self-build scheme. <coughs> so, oh, I forgot to use this, sorry. So we have Eden, uh, we've got the, uh, we're the planning authority for the central bit, but not for the, uh, uh, the beige area on the left, which is the uh, Lake District National Park, or the purple area on the bottom, which is the Yorkshire Dales National Park, Park. These have been extended into our area and we are not the planning authority. If you want to build down there, go to the uh, town hall in the Lake District or go off down to wherever it is in, uh, in the Yorkshire Dales. This is and has to be your Bible in terms of where you're looking for sites. This is our current local plan and development management who deal with the planning applications. They use this to determine whether an application will be a approved or refused. So you should be looking for sites in Alston, Appleby, Kirby Stephen, Penrith, infill sites. We've got the 13 key hubs, 102 small of hamlets and villages, uh, and of course we've got the rural area. And this policy document tells you what you can build in each of those areas. So self-build plots. We've got lots of self-build plots. About 40% of the development in Eden is self-build. Little, lovely, delightful little property in Shap built a, a few years ago. Still haven't finished. They've still got gravel on the drive and all the rest of it. And you think, why does anybody want to go and live in Shap? Because across the road, that is the outlook and view. But it's a standard infill gap site that was somebody's garden. And these are the sort of things you should be looking out for as you're driving around. You've looked at the local plan, you've strolled through the villages, and you start to look for sites. You're approaching the landowner. Are you willing to sell your garden and things like that? Salt Road, self built I'm sure there was a house on this site originally. Uh, I think there was, but this is what you do. Uh, we were told that you shouldn't really knock things down straight up, first of all, but then the world is your oyster if you can uh, find, a, find a site and knock it down. And here we have a, a nice site of Clifton Dykes, again, self-built, uh, built within the current planning policy. Now, this is a forever home near Dufton. Lovely man, uh, family that's done this. And uh, I thought, what a delightful little scheme. Uh, it's in the rural area. There's only three other properties round about it. And what is it? It's an affordable home. So people who may find that they can't build or an afford a house in their local area, may find that there is an option to go through the affordable housing route. Affordable housing covers a wide range of properties from 
social housing right the way down at one end, uh, to simply people who can't afford to build or buy a house in their locality, and they still meet the criteria of affordable need. Now, we have mentioned the La Livid Community Trust before. It's heralded. It's a very good scheme indeed. It's got a sequence of affordable houses that these, the scheme wanted to build, and it's cross-subsidised by a sequence of self-build houses. So this is a, a bit of a link between the two. So you've got the affordable houses sort of wrapping around just to the left and to the right, and as you move to the, towards the end of the scheme, you're into the, the self-builds. The scheme's been running for the best part of 10 years, and the self-builds are still carrying on. So it's not an overnight project that happens immediately. We do have a range of self-builds, and the delights of this is that primarily one architect tended to be involved, and he was able to carry the theme of stone, slate roofs, and so forth, round and through the scheme, which is the, the gel which binds it all together. It all works reasonably well, and it's delightful that everybody's having the opportunity to do their own houses. The builders call this the chapel at the end of the site. Can't quite think why, but it does have a sort of a ring to it somewhere. It's a lovely house at the end. Why is it at the end? It's got a fabulous building. Now, and the windows and all the rest of it, it's a dark charcoal grey. I think it will time warp. So you've got to think about that. But um, I think my problem with this one is that they've used concrete coinstones around the, the side and they're, they're fading at a different rate to the natural stone that you've got everywhere else in the building. I said to somebody earlier, put, the, put your best money in terms of the materials that you're going to be using and do the best you can. I suppose rather, as Charlie was saying, don't build as big as you can, build as good as you can and make the most of it. What we do is, we do planning applications, pre-application inquiries through development management. Um, we encourage anybody to use our pre-inquiry service. Building Control also run a pre-inquiry service. Find out what's involved in making a planning application. Find out if your application is likely to be approved. Find out what all the problems are associated with building control and how to build. Building control, very experienced people, they are helping you with the overall aim to ensure that your building is safe, weatherproof, protected against fire, has adequate drainage, and in the case of certain types of buildings, to provide for dis disabled access. So you can design and construct your building in accordance with a number of different standards. Uh, their pre-application service helps you to work your way through what is a very complicated service. I would also say Use an architect. Use somebody who knows how to do something properly. Plan drawers have their niche in the development process, but it's only the case when you know exactly what you want to build and how you want to build it. Otherwise, they will just build what you tell them to, and your build will be restricted by your experience. So get somebody who knows what they want, use their experience to get it as best as you can. Use their experience to do it right first time. So the other thing just before I sort of rather finish up now is to bear in mind that you're in your build project, you're rattling on, and as Bruce said before, he makes changes as he's going along, but do be aware that some of the changes that you make as you're as you're doing this, you may need to change your building regs application, and you also may need to change your planning permission. Everything's interdependent, and there are two different services that you have to meet. So, and I'm putting in a, a little pitch here for building control, because they provide a very competitive service. So uh, use them. They provide same-day inspections so that your build isn't delayed while you're waiting for somebody to come and work out are your foundations deep enough? And yes, it's still raining. So overall, we're here to help. There's lots of things that we do. The community housing team have got money to give away to help you with your community dream. The building controls here, planning's here. The policy team will try and tell you where you're likely to get planning permission, where to look. So you've got lots of things on offer. So if you have any queries, catch up with us downstairs. More than happy to assist you. Thank you.